Oh, hi there. I didn't see you walk in. Nice to meet you. My name's Jeffrey, and yeah, it looks like I will be your teacher for this semester's PHP for Beginners class. And I hope you're excited because I'm not going to sugarcoat it. You have a long road ahead. <laughs> There's a lot to learn. Not what you want to hear at the very beginning, but it, but it's true. Uh, maybe at some point you saw a listing that says, become a programmer with this two-week boot camp, but I don't know what they're smoking. It doesn't work that way. It's a long trek. But trust me, if this is the job and if this is the career for you, I think you're going to enjoy every step of the process. Okay, so let's talk about this course I've made for you. Um, it has been meticulously designed specifically for where you are in your journey right now. And sometimes at the beginning, you are overwhelmed with options. They'll say, hey, install a code editor. And then you check and there's 12 different choices. Well, which one do I pick? Uh, maybe you want to learn a language. Well, which one? <laughs> there's, there's 10 different ones to pick, you know? So you are constantly inundated with choices that you are not yet qualified to make. And that's where I step in. For each step of this process, I will show you choices and then I will recommend one or two. Maybe this editor, maybe install PHP in that way. Uh, when you're working with the language itself, maybe take this approach instead of that approach. And I think it'll really help you. And trust me, I only wish someone had been available 15 years ago or so when I was first learning. It would have been a massive help to me. And you get this all for free. You don't have to pay a penny for it. So I hope you're excited. I'm done talking. Let's get to work. Okay, so before we can dig in and have some fun, of course, the first step is to create the world, so to speak. And that means installing all of the tooling necessary to start building PHP applications. So let's go. The first prerequisite is a good code editor. And maybe you already have this step complete. Uh, I'm assuming you might have a little HTML and CSS experience, but maybe that's about it. Uh, but nonetheless, I would recommend using PHP Storm, which is what I will use in this series, or Visual Studio Code, or Sublime Text. All three are fantastic choices. Or again, if you really like what you're currently using, then stick with it. No problem there at all. Next up, you'll need access to a suitable terminal. And luckily, Mac and Windows ship with these out of the box. So for example, I'm on a Mac. If I were to search for terminal, and this is how mine looks. And yeah, we're not gonna spend too much time in the terminal, but if you can change directories, if you can list files, if you can run a couple commands, you'll be in good shape. I'll show you one right now. If I want to change directories, I can use CD. And on my Mac, I'm gonna go to my desktop. So I can do this right here, and there we go. If I want to list the files, I can use ls. And in this case, I don't have any files uh, on my desktop. And later, you'll learn how to run commands like PHP and MySQL. OK, but otherwise, you can also install dedicated tools that some people prefer. For example, I use one called Warp. And here's what that looks like, a little bit cleaner but still effectively the same thing. It just has a few bells and whistles. You might also consider a tool like iTerm, or again, on Windows, uh, Windows Terminal should do the trick for you. Okay, so on that note, the next step is to, of course, install PHP and MySQL. And I'll warn you, this can be a little frustrating because there's so many different ways you could do it. Developers have all sorts of opinions about what that correct way is. So what I'm gonna do is show you a handful of those options, and then I will recommend one or two. All right, so let's start with the Mac. On the Mac, I'm a big fan of a tool called Homebrew. Here's instructions for how to install it. And then once it's available, you can install PHP by saying brew install PHP. Let me show you real quick. I'm gonna copy this right here or click on the clipboard, switch to the terminal that you picked in the last window. Again, I'm using one called warp and I will command V and run that command. And yeah, that's now doing its thing. So let's give it just a minute. Okay, and that's complete. And then finally notice we need to run these two commands. So I will copy them and paste it in. So why don't we test it out by running the command brew. And there we go. Let's now search for PHP. Brew search PHP. And here's everything that pops up. And yeah, notice how we can install the latest version of PHP, like I've already done. But if for some reason you also need an older version, that's an option as well. So in your case, you would say brew install PHP. 
And notice at the time of this recording, we're grabbing 8.1.4. All right, that took a few minutes, but it looks like it's done. And let's try it out, php-v for version, and sure enough, I get 8.1.4. Okay, let's try it again, but this time for MySQL, which will be our database. And I'll talk to you more about that in future episodes. Brew, install, MySQL. Okay, and that's finally done as well. Let's test it out. There we go. So yeah, if you're on a Mac, or even Linux actually, Homebrew is a nice and easy way to get these things installed on your machine. But what about Windows? Well, for Windows, a very popular tool these days is called Laragon. Just visit laragon.org, visit the download page, and you will want this version right here. And that'll get you up and running. It's a full UI, it's the full thing, it's the full deal. Otherwise, if you are familiar with WSL and WSL2, you might consider that. Maybe the, the entry point is a bit higher depending upon where you are in your learning. Uh, I would base your usage of this on if you know what it is. If you identify with this and you think, oh, that's exactly uh, what I need, then that's the way to go. Otherwise, if this looks like gibberish, maybe skip over it. Of course, there's dedicated tooling like Docker and there's wrappers around Docker. Again, it's a little advanced for where we currently are. You might consider a long-standing uh, tool called XAMPP, and there's also one called MAMP. Uh, MAMP works for Windows and Mac. These are, these are traditional local environment ecosystems, so to speak, and they include everything you need to get up and running. So yeah, whether you install it manually with Homebrew, uh, whether you pull in Laragon or XAMPP or MAMP, it doesn't exactly matter. So your job right now is to pick one of these. Again, I would recommend Homebrew and Laragon if you're on Windows. Pick one of these, run through the entire installation process and see if you can get it to work. Okay, and then the final piece of the puzzle for now is to choose some kind of UI for interacting with your MySQL database. Now, of course, you could do it directly from the terminal, and some people do, but you know what? I think you'll be a little more comfortable if you choose one of these dedicated apps. The one I like and what we will be using in this series is called Table Plus, and there is a download for Mac and Windows. And it looks like Linux is an option as well. Otherwise, if you want something web-based and, and much more traditional, PHP MyAdmin is actually what I originally got set up with uh, maybe 15 years ago or so. You can try out the demo if you want. It's an option. Um, if you need it, it's entirely free, but you know what? I would recommend just stick with Table Plus and you'll feel right at home. Okay, so think about it. At this point, you should have something like PHP Storm or Visual Studio Code or Sublime Text installed on your machine, a code editor. Uh, you should have PHP and MySQL installed. You should have a database GUI like Table Plus installed. You should have chosen a terminal, whether it's the one that your OS provides or iTerm or Warp. It doesn't really matter. Just pick one. So now all of the tooling is available. We don't quite know what to do with that tooling, but it's now on our machine. So that's the topic of the next lesson. Let's put it all together and uh, figure out what comes out on the other side. I'll see you then.